Hi. Uh, I had, uh, or I have, kind of a unique opportunity here because I just finished uh, this Regal 2019 that uh, was made between, I think, like 1925 and 1930. I just finished it, um, and this is uh, a guitar that I found in a, in a thrift store. And it was a real basket case. The neck was coming off. Uh, the fingerboard was all shrunk, as these old ebonized fingerboards get. I, in fact, I have I have the old fingerboard right here. So you can sort of see I, I've taken it. I've taken little bits off to patch other ebonized fingerboards that were in better shape. So this needed to go, and it was probably made out of alder. I think, from, from what I can tell. Um, but these ebonized fingerboards can be made of all sorts of things. Some are made out of poplar, some are made out of maple probably, or fruit wood, cherry, all sorts of things. So I put a rosewood board on, on this and, uh, and matched the inlays. It has this weird inlay at the 10th fret as opposed to the 9th, which was a thing people did. <laughs> and. Uh, and since I went to all that trouble of uh, putting a new fretboard on, I also added these green position markers, or green dots at the 12th fret, and green position markers on the side. Um, it's a small, small body guitar, about 24 inches or so in scale, a little shy of that. And the really cool thing is, about a year ago, I finished restoring this guitar, which uh, is also made by the Regal Company, but I think about probably about 10 years later. And these got made uh, for the Slingerland Company, which is a drum company. And what they do usually is they'd send unfinished guitars to Slingerland, and then Slingerland would put a, uh, a celluloid, uh, what they call mother of toilet seat, uh, fretboard on it would be look like a bowling ball kind of and sometimes even backs and sides that are covered in in that uh, that celluloid material so they look like uh, which was drum skin you know and they look like they look like drums uh, and I thought you know I see a lot of videos comparing Martin Gibson uh, Larson Brothers Martin Martins of different years and all those big manufacturers, but Regal is a huge, huge instrument manufacturer. They made thousands and thousands of guitars, and though they're not up to the standard of workmanship that some of the other bigger, bigger names are, they're amazing guitars, uh, and especially, especially these eras because they have uh, very specific bracing. Anyway, uh, I have them strung up with the exact same gauge strings, and both of them are set up with just about the same action. So I thought it'd be an interesting comparison, because they're really quite different. And uh, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd play them both a bit, and hopefully, hopefully it comes through what the differences are on the, on the camera's microphone there. Both of them are quite loud for their size. And I'll talk about, I'll play them both and we'll talk about their construction. I'll put some pictures up so you can sort of see what the differences are inside too, because I have the backs off of both of these guitars. So I'll play this one uh, with a pick and then just with, with, uh, with my fingers so you can sort of see the range of things it can do and what it sounds like. That's sort of very, very dry. There's lots of air, lots of air in the mid range and high end of this one, and, and it goes really deep. That's that's all. That's all to me. You know, it's, it's, I'm sure it's going to be different coming through the microphone, but for the player, this guitar is very loose, open, and 
kind of overtony guitar. There's a lot. There's a lot going on in the sort of clouds around the notes with this guitar. So that's that guitar. I'll put up. Um, I'll put up uh, pictures so you can see the bracing. Um, but I'll explain it a little bit. There's a brace that goes right here, right before the bridge, and then there's a diagonal brace, which is sort of a trademark of these regals, though it changes. The diagonal brace and how they use it changes. It actually goes this way. So there's sort of more space on the bass side, more open space on the bass side, and less on the treble side. No braces below the bridge on this guitar, uh, which makes it's interesting. I've, I've, uh, we'll talk about that more once you hear the other guitar, what, what the differences are and why those differences might be. All right, now here's the Maybell. And, um, and I'll just play it and then we'll talk about it a little bit afterwards and hopefully you can see some of the differences. <laughs> some sort of idea. two guitars sound. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what I did to this to this Maybell because it had a more severe kind of restoration in some ways and less in others. Um, it's got its original terrible ebonized fingerboard and uh, and refretting these is, is sort of a nightmare. But this one has it and it's and it's got the, all the glue marks and stuff to prove it. This one, both of these really uh, and what often happens to these guitars is as they distort and warp, because these are very lightly built instruments, uh, people sort of will try to repurpose them, because they've never been, they're never expensive. People try to repurpose them and uh, make them into slide guitars as they sort of fold in on themselves. And so when I got this guitar, the, uh, it had a bridge slot like this, like, like the other one, which um, it's slotted to put basically a fret in there as the saddle instead of a piece of bone. And, and that whole slot and quite a bit of the rest of the bridge here was filled with uh, mysterious, mysterious sort of handyman glue. And, and I had to spend a, a great deal of time patching holes and re-reaming re out this. And I figured, since I had to do so much repair, that I'd, I'd put a bone, a slot for a bone nut in it. So this one has, or a, a saddle rather, as to say. So this one has a bone saddle. It also, um, the last one had a, had a bone nut. This one has a uh, buffalo horn nut because I, at the time I was trying to match the old, the color of the old ebony nuts that they had. They used to have ebony nuts. Um, this one is braced differently. It again has the diagonal braces that open up towards the bass side, except this one, they wisely, I think, put a brace, though it changes the sound, they put a brace below the bridge that goes diagonally and a brace here above the bridge that goes diagonally. So instead of having two braces above the bridge, move one down here and move it diagonally. These guitars have no bracing around the sound hole. So when I got this guitar, it had begun to fold itself in half and there was a great distortion at the sound hole. And so I ended up putting two very small braces um, here and here on either side of the... So I added a couple braces to this one. Also, all the braces had disappeared from the back of this one. And so I cut four new back braces 
and I hadn't seen this guitar at the time. They have traditionally have spruce back braces, which is odd, though not unheard of. Um, I cut maple back braces to match the maple of the bridge and all that kind of stuff, and and um, re-radiused the top too because these tops or the back rather these backs are curved, and I had to sort of guesstimate because I hadn't seen a lot of these when I did this, but it worked out well. It's got so it's got maple braces on on the back and um, and the real big thing about this guitar or the biggest feel difference I, I feel like is this has a very reasonable kind of round poplar neck whereas this has a great big V neck and I also kind of put a big thick uh, uh, fingerboard to replace the old thin ebonized one so it's a it's a very different playing experience beyond the sound but I think also it's interesting to hear uh, what the differences are in the construction and bracing too. Sorry. Because uh, I think the fact that this other one doesn't have any braces below the bridge is part of what gives it its particular kind of bass response. And I've noticed this in some of the other older Regals I've played too. That when you leave this area open on a small body guitar, you seem to get a lot of bass for good or ill. You also get, you know, more of those overtones. It's not as, it's not as clear. Here's a C chord on this. And here's a C chord on this. Oh, they're way different. There's more warmth here, I feel like. And more punch here. A little bit more articulation, too. The highs. <laughs> Let's see if we can stack these up. Not all that different. Well, it's interesting. You know, describing sounds always interesting, and, and it really comes down to feel. They're quite, quite different. Uh, uh, let's see. I think uh, to end, I'll play, I don't know, I'll play something uh, really simple on both of them, just to further illustrate. And, uh, and both these guitars are actually for sale. This one I'm a little more hesitant to give up, so it's, its price is probably higher than it should be. But I've never seen these Swan decals. And even though this, this guitar is in rough shape, it better suits my needs, so I'm sort of more loath to sell it. But this one is a heck of a deal. Because um, I believe, I'm not going to say on here <laughs> exactly, but if, if, if you're interested in, in such things, you can always contact me at rsrandall.com. Or, uh, and yeah, let's see. So, so to lead this out, I'll play something. I hope that's been illuminating. I, I always find it very interesting uh, working on these old guitars, and it's and it's interesting to think about why every guitar is different, and uh, and it's interesting examining these ladder brace guitars because I feel like I feel like it's something that's been coming back into vogue the last few years, especially with Callings uh, making the Waterloo gu uh, guitars and a bunch and some other makers making. Uh, ladder brace style guitars in the Harmony Regal uh, sort of style. Uh, anyway, if, if you want to look more, find out more about these guitars, you can always visit my website, rsrandall.com. 
and they're always interesting, uh, interesting stuff always going on. I'm always working on different instruments, and uh, and there's just about always uh, something I've built or restored that's for sale. Uh, so if you're interested in such things, go ahead and contact me, and I'd be happy to uh, get some new instruments in your life. So, until next time.